Welcome to the Palace Castle, which was the summer residence of the first royal Romanian couple, King Charles I of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen and Queen Elizabeth of Wied. They both were from Germany. King was born on April the 20, 1839 in Sigmaringen Castle. He was a member of the Hohenzollern family. At the age of 27, he was chosen by the Romanian government to become prince or ruler of Romania. He came here on May the 10th, 1866, and uh, the first uh, a trip he uh, did in Romania was here in Sinaia, a land which looks like Sigmaringen. So this is why he decided to build Peles Castle right here. So they started building in 1873 and was completely finished in May 1914. In September, King passed away. First inauguration of the castle took place in 1883. And although smaller than now, was one of the most modern castles in Europe. Back then, Peles Castle had central heating system, hot and cool running water, telephone, telegraph, storage, yeah, and after 1900, it also has two electric elevators and a central vacuum cleaner system. We're gonna see the first reception room of the castle, so the room where King received his guest. Let's take a look in the Hall of Honor. So uh, now we are in the Hall of Honor, biggest room of the castle. Located in the center of the castle, the room is 16 meters high. Very impressive in this room is that the ceiling of the room can be opened manually and also electrically since 1911. Also, the richly carved wood decoration in here. We're going to see a spiral staircase over there, which is uh, a staircase carved by Romanian artist, Gheorghe Stănescu. Panels of the room were made in uh, Vienna by uh, Bernhard Ludwig workshops and in golden frames of the panels there are inlaying wood or wood marquetries which are representing medieval castles of the family from Germany and Switzerland. Are to be seen in the room uh, the two marble statues which are depicting the royal members Charles I and Elizabeth and also a Florentine table which is 500 years old. It is to be seen a portrait which depicts His Majesty King Charles I as large as life, painted by an American artist, George Alexander Peter Healy. King was a great collector. He had impressive collections of paintings, books, furniture, carpets, coins, and also he had one of the largest weapons collections in Europe. We're gonna see a part of those in the Great Hall. Let's have a look inside. So we're gonna get inside of the, the Great Hall of Weapons. King's collection counted about uh, 4,000 weapons, and thus was one of the largest private weapons collections in Europe. Now in the castle there are just a part of those. During the communist time, most of the weapons and original paintings of the room were transported to national museums in, um, in Bucharest. For example, now in the room, there are about a thousand European weapons most of them from Germany, but there are also to be seen in the room Italian, Spanish and French weapons too. Armors in here are German, with the exception of the complete armor for horse and knight. Unique in our country, that armor weighs about 120 kilos and was used only in parades or ceremonies. What is very important to see here, it is the door right behind me, which was the king's door after 1906. So king preferred to use that door as the main entrance in the castle. Also to be seen in here, a 
fireplace which is just decorative and on the shelf of it there is displayed an executioner's sword from the 16th century. On the blade of the sword there is engraved a text in the old German language. In translation, when the sword will be above your head, God will offer you eternal life. Even if it's hard to believe or not, was a pleasure back then and an honor for being beheaded with that one. Also, this room exhibits a copy after the king's crown. The official one, original, it's in Bucharest at the National History Museum and was made out of a Turkish cannon steel, which was captured during the Independence War, which is also known in the world history as the Russian against Ottomans between 1877 and 1878. So King captured a cannon draw there and from it still he made his crown and thus the crown became the symbol of the independence from the old Ottoman Empire. This is probably why Charles I was only a prince or ruler until 1881 when he was coronated as the first king of Romania. We have to continue also with oriental weapons which are very impressive. Most of those there are ceremonial weapons. Let's gonna take a look inside. As I said, oriental weapons mean Persian, Japanese, Indian, Arabic, and also Ottoman weapons. But for sure, the most impressive weapons in the king's collection are those displayed in the showcase. There are oriental weapons used for ceremonies only, so we have to start to present those from the upper part where we're gonna see a Turkish sword which is called as Shamshir. That one is covered with shark skin, it's gilded and decorated with turquoises. On the first shelf, Ottoman and Syrian weapons. On the second one is to be seen an Indian double dagger known as Qatar was used by the Maharajak for killing tigers. Also, there is to be seen a weapon which is a half gun and the other half is a dagger. And uh, the most impressive and important weapon from the Romanian history, it is the red sword in the background, covered in velvet, silk and uh, silver. That sword belonged to Gabriel Bathory, who was Prince of Transylvania. The sword was a gift for King Michael I, last King of Romania, from his father, Charles II. So visit the castle should continue with the King's office. But we're gonna see inside, all the doors look different on each part, matches the rim. If on this part the door is decorated in a Gothic style with a lot of metal, on the other side, the door is decorated in German New Renaissance style. So we have to continue to the King's office, passing through the waiting room. Let's take a look inside. King's office is a room uh, built in 1883. Panels, ceiling and the whole furniture are made of walnut wood. In this room we're gonna see the king's, uh, the king's desk and right above the desk there is a portrait which depicts his mother, Duchess Josephine of Baden. There is also to be seen here a reading desk, the place where to place the official audiences. Till for private or personal meetings they use the cozy corner while behind me. Are to be seen in here German and Swiss stained glass windows. Those are a part of the 800 collection which belong to the castle, biggest collection of this type in Romania. And once we are turning back, you will gonna see on both sides on the cardboard two portraits. On the right, a portrait which depicts His Majesty King Charles I wear a military uniform. And on the left, the second portrait depicts Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth with their only child, Princess Maria. Princess Maria died when she was three and seven months because of scarlet fever. 
After this, they have to adopt King's nephew, Ferdinand. He become the second king of our country. He married to a princess from England, Mary of Edinburgh, who was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria of England and granddaughter of Tsar Alexander II of Russia. They had six children. First was Charles, who became Charles II of Romania. He married to Helen, Princess of Greece, and they had only one child, Michael I, who was the fourth and the last king of Romania. He passed away in 2017 at the age of 96. Now the head of the royal family is Her Majesty Margaret, the custodian of the Romanian royal crown. Before we leave the room, we have to take a look at the fireplace of the room, which is made of porcelain, also known as biscuit porcelain. In the upper part, there is present the old Romanian coat of arms from the king's time. Without Transylvania, because Transylvania was a part of the austro hungarian Empire until 1918, so till the end of the First World War. Down the emblem, there is engraved the Romanian royal motto, Nihil sine Deo, which means nothing without God. Visit of the castle continues with another private room, King's Library. A room full of secrets, a room full of books. Back then, the royal collection counted 40,000 books. But now in here, there are just 400. Rest of those are now in Bucharest, at the National Library and the Romanian Academy Library too. Books are about history, geography, literature, philosophy, and also politics. And those were written in four languages, German, English, French, and Romanian. King spoke those four languages. Till Her Majesty the Queen, she spoke German, English, French, Romanian, Italian, Greek, Swedish, Spanish, and also Russian. Like all the libraries in the castles all over the world, in here there is a secret door. Second bookcase, from right to left, the place where are four shelves. There are in there just book covers linked together. So this is the door, why behind there is a spiral staircase which leads to the royal apartment on the first floor. Visit at the castle continues with official rooms for guests. First, we have to take a look on the left, where we're gonna see the new audience room, which was the last room decorated in the castle in May 1914. And after this, we have to take a look in the music room. The old music room, a room which was transformed and in 1910 turned to a literary saloon. Paintings of the room are the original, done by the German symbolistic artist Dora Hitz. There is only one exception in the room, a watercolour entitled uh, The Little One, which was painted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. She was painter, musician, translator and writer. Well known under her pen name, Carmen Silva, which means the forest song. She published 43 books in German, English, French and Romanian. And she also knows to play piano, violin, also harp and harpsichord. In this room we're gonna see the Queen's uh, piano made by the German workshop Beckstein. Also an Italian Raphael harp and a Romanian violin, which is displayed on the table. German stained glass windows inspired by Romanian poems written by Vasile Alexandri. He was a poet who encouraged Queen Elizabeth to publish. Panels of the room are made of two types of wood, walnut and ash. And what we'll see in this room is also the second type, the heating system. So in the basement of the castle, there are 13 tunnels. The air from outside comes through the tunnels and this it comes to radiators. Now the physics said that uh, hot air come inside and this is how they hit the castle in 1883. The system during the summer time turned to a ventilation system or we can say also it's uh, pretty much similar to the air conditioner system nowadays. We're gonna change the style so we have to leave the German decoration for the Italian one. 
And now we're gonna see the first reception hall, Florentine room. The Florentine hall, it's a room decorated in Italian New Renaissance style. Fireplace in here is made of Italian Carrara marble. And in the upper part, there are three bronze statues, which are copies after Michelangelo Bonarotti. There are two cabinets on both sides of the fireplace, which are made of ebony wood and semi-precious stones. Back then, those cabinets were considered jewelry boxes. Because we are in a reception room, those are in here just as decoration. Very impressive, the ceiling, it's made out of uh, gilded lime wood. And in the center of it, there is a painting which depicts Calliope, the epic muse. Speaking about an Italian decoration, the two chandeliers and also the mirror of the room are decorated with the best Italian glass, Murano glass. Even if in this room there are to be seen to thrones, those in here are just decorative. The Hall of Thrones was in Bucharest, at the Royal Palace, which nowadays is known as the National Art Museum. All the paintings are copies of the masterpieces. Back then, copies were very expensive and very important, because the castle is decorated in historical style. Probably one of the most impressive painting in this room, it is the one in the corner, entitled The Virgin Mary Education, a copy of the Rubens painted by Charfelieu. He was a Flemish artist who was born armless, and he painted that with his feet. We have to pass through the mirror's corridor, or the mirror's hall, which serve as a corridor for the other rooms, and we will continue the visit with the royal dining room. The place where the royal members and their guests used to serve lunch and dinner. Table, it is extendable from 12 up to 36 seats. Tablecloth, it's original. Original Rosenthal porcelain on table. Bohemian crystal glasses, silver cuts, and uh, they usually respect the French protocol. And thus, king and queen usually sit in the center of the table face to face. In the background of the room, there is a cardboard. Right behind this one and in the center, there is the place where the dumbwaiter, the electric one, bring the food from the kitchen, which was located in the basement. The Moorish Hall it is the third and the last reception hall of the castle, a room inspired by the Spanish palace Alhambra, where ceiling and the walls are covered with gilded plaster. In the center of the room, in the background, there is a fountain made of Italian Carrara marble, and the carpets of the room are original. Now we have to step a little bit the rules, and let's take a look in a room which is not open for the public. So now, because we are arrived near the fountain, made of Carrara marble, as I said, let's get inside to the king's billiard room. The place where king usually play billiard and chess, if he 
come closer here, you're going to see that uh, the table was especially created for the king. So you can count your points here. And we're going to see also the king's chess table. This room is it's richly carved in wood. They use oak, walnut and ash wood for this room. Also, we can take a look here, the former chess room. The table was moved, but this was the place where they usually used to play chess and also the place where men usually smoke. All the world members enjoy smoking. King Ferdinand, the second king of our country, he was a heavy smoker. And now we have to continue with an oriental room. We're gonna pass through a French corridor decorated in empire style. And we're gonna see over here the Ottoman room. A room full covered in silk embroidered with gold. On the table on the right side, you're gonna see the king's water pipe. Shisha Nargila or Huka. Nearby on the swords, the red bag. It's the tobacco bag. And the carpet of the room is an original Smyrna one. So this was the last room of the official tour. Now we have to take a look upstairs with our bedrooms and also rooms for very special guests. Fine, so we have to continue the visit on the first floor. This way, please. So now we have to pass through the marble gallery, which serves as a foyer for the concert hall. Let's take a look inside. Concert hall is a room decorated in English style, Elizabethan style, where the wood floor is the original one. Panels are made of walnut wood. And in the upper part, the walls are covered with the well-known Cordoban leather. Fireplace of the room, it is made of Romanian stone and on top of it there is a painting which depicts Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth hearing to the forest voices. In the background of the room there is the stage where you're gonna see a Japanese kawaii piano, a pretty new one, this because this room is also used as a concert hall nowadays. It is to be seen an Austrian organ made in 1904 by Gebruger Rieger Jagendorf workshops. This organ counts 1,796 pipes. And what makes it unique in Europe is that it has two keyboards. First in this room and the other one in the other room. Thus the artist can choose in each room he prefers to play or two artists can play in the same time. Let's take a look in the other room see the second part of the organ. There's to be seen in here the second keyboard and a lot of pipes. This is an electric organ, still function nowadays. This room is also known as the new music room or the private room for music. The furniture in here, it is made of teak wood and was a gift for King Charles II in 1936 from the Maharaja of Kapurthala from India. There is uh, a story about the furniture which said that 
three generations of artists carved for a hundred years for this furniture. In the showcases, there is displayed Chinese and Japanese porcelain too. We're gonna see from uh, the Chinese uh, Chaladon to Japanese Satsuma vases from the 18th century. Center of the room presents a large Chinese vase known as Xianlu. This type of vase was used in Chinese temples for burn incenses. So now we have to take a look inside of the Queen's office. An Italian neorenaissance decoration. We're gonna see the Queen's desk in here with his original typewriter made by the American workshop Remington. And there is also to be seen a cozy corner in the room where the stained glasses are inspired by fairy tales. For example, we can see on the right side, Snow White. And from the office of the king, there is to be seen uh, the royal bedroom but we have to use another entrance for this one. So we'll continue on the official way on the corridor. We have to stop a little bit in here and we're gonna see that there is a word drop on the corridor, which is uh, a secret door that laid inside the royal bedroom. Royal bedroom with a Flemish decoration, panels made of walnut wood, was the royal bedroom for king and queen. They slept together. There is the bed over there in the background. On the left and right above the bed is to be seen a portrait that depicts their daughter, Princess Mary. The princess who died at the age of three and seven months because of scarlet fever. From uh, the royal bedroom, uh, our visit continues to the dressing room, the royal one. Now we are in the royal dressing room, the small one for only a day. The royal rules say that you have to change up your clothes many times a day. We're gonna see one of the queen's jewelry boxes on the table. That's made of uh, English Wedgwood porcelain. The story continues with the bathroom of the king. A bathroom very modern for that time, split into rooms, a restroom after the bath and uh, the bathroom. We're gonna see in here an original nickel metal bathtub. Continue with the original bidet. Hot and cold running water in English style. They had uh, hot and cold running water and also storage from 1883. And uh, behind the door right here, it is the king's flashing toilet. King had an original flashing toilet from 1883. If downstairs we saw the dining room used for lunch and dinner, up here we're gonna see different rooms used for breakfast. And the first one is of course the royal breakfast room. We're gonna see in here an original tablecloth, Rosenthal and mice and porcelain on table. And in the background of the room there is the king's office, the second office of the king where he checked his mail every morning. Very impressive in this room, it is of course the stove made of uh, Swiss porcelain, Kaiser und Zug. This one is just a decorative stove, inside there is a steam radiator. As I already told you, Pelash Castle had central heating system 
from the very beginning, in 1883. On, the, on this corridor, we're going to see also the second secret door. This is the place where the spiral secret staircase from the King's Library arrives to. And now we have to pass through the King's uh, adjutant room. That's the place where the King's adjutant gives the report to the King every morning. This is uh, what we can see, the first room of the apartment, the main entrance in here, and also we'll see a lot of paintings, copies after Albrecht Dürer. We have to change the style, so leaving the Flemish decoration, we'll continue to a French room, Rococo bedroom. Inspired by Fontainebleau Castle, which is in France, this room, it is fully covered in gold foil. We can see the cozy corner where ladies used to serve the five o'clock tea, German porcelain, Meissen, and also the heater of the room. Another decorative one nearby is to be seen the steam radiator hidden in uh, the white box. The wardrobe of the room, it is just uh, a decorative one because that one, it is in fact a secret door. We're going to see a queen-size bed. This is the place where second queen of Romania, Queen Mary, gave birth to her first child, Charles, who became Charles II of Romania. Bathroom and uh, the living room for this apartment are decorated in modern style. We're going to see Italian ceramic everywhere, made in Ginori workshops, and also Italian porcelain Capo di Monte. The furniture in here is made of fir tree, painted white. So now we'll see the bathroom for this apartment. And in here, the marble is original, and also we're going to see an original bathtub made of nickel metal. And now we have to continue the visit in the most spectacular apartment of the castle, a guest apartment entitled the Imperial One. The Imperial Apartment, built between 1905 and 1906, it is decorated in neo-baroque style, Austrian. The furniture in here was made in Vienna and ceiling and the carpet of the room have pretty much the same decoration. This is also known as ton sur ton. In the background of the room is to be seen uh, the bedroom and right behind that one it is uh, the apartment for uh, the guest uh, butler. Chandelier of the room is in Russian style with the uh, bohemian crystal and in the upper part we're gonna see the model of a crown. The biscuit porcelain statue on the left side in the room depict the Empress Elizabeth, well known as the Empress Sisi. And in the moment when we are turning back in this apartment, we're gonna see that the door used for the entrance, it's uh, an wardrop door. We're gonna continue our visit with the breakfast room. We're gonna see in here Louis XV uh, furniture with the Aubusson tapestries on it, cordoban leather and walls, and also the decoration of ceiling and carpet look pretty much the same. On the corridor over here, we're gonna see the door of the electric elevator. An electric elevator made in 1903 by the German workshop called AEG, which is still function 
since uh, nowadays. I told you that uh, this is one of the most modern castles in Europe. We have also in here a red box with the inscription of BVC. This it is the central vacuum cleaner system. In the basement there is still the original vacuum pump made in Vienna in 1901 by Brevets Hertz Cossack company. Those holes were changed by BVC workshops in 2011. The vacuum cleaner is still function. My colleagues uh, plug here pipes with brushes that suck the dust in the vacuum pump, which is in the basement. Thank you so much for your attention. Before we leave the castle, we have to take a look closer to something. Hope you enjoy the visit at here. And now we have to take a look closer to the key holder of the castle. King said this because he had the keys holding here and he take off his hat saying uh, welcome to the visitors who are coming and uh, bye bye to the visitors who are leaving the house. Now we are waiting for your visiting us. Thank you so much.